Uh, so thank you for coming. We, uh, uh, this is our third uh, WebRTC event uh, under the Cranky Geek brand. I am the cranky part. Let me introduce to you right now the other crankier elements of me. Uh, we'll introduce uh, Sahi, Sahi, who you know under the uh, uh, Sahi. And uh, Chad Hart. So you'll see them all during the day here. Chad is operating with almost no sleep. Uh, so uh, he may, he, these seats are very, are these seats comfortable? This is the most comfortable auditorium I've been in. Uh, so, th so make yourself at home. Now we run pretty much on schedule. So let me go through some quick logistics for you. We do 20 minute speaking slots. They're very quick, very high paced. I'm the, I'm the most boring of the persons you're gonna see here today. We also spend a lot of time annoying the speakers to make sure they give you value. This event is about you. And um, uh, at the end of the set, at the end of each speaker, we do have time for a few questions, but we want to keep the pace going so so you don't get bored and tired. We also have a number of breaks. We do have lunch served at 1:30, the first break, so in roughly in an hour and a half, right out here. There's also space downstairs. There's a beautiful park. This is a great venue. We are videotaping this. We are not live streaming it, and uh, you'll get an email when we publish that. Uh, they'll be published on a variety of channels on YouTube. Uh, so that you, you can either watch them again, probably not me, no one ever, no one ever watches my videos um, for some reason, but, we, but we, as well as videos from the other Cranky Geeks, uh, cranky geeks have done. Um, as, as you saw, I, I'm a blogger about WebRTC, I've been following WebRTC since 2009, and I've worked in the telecom industry, and I've just, uh, I've loved voice and video, and, and when you watch WebRTC, the power of it is obviously its simplicity. Uh, there's a lot of complexity about what we're to see behind the scenes, but the simplicity that it offers for a developer to enable communications in their application is quite powerful. And I've teamed up through the years with Sahi, who, who writes a more popular blog uh, with lots of news, opinions. Uh, I write most of the opinions. Most, I, I'm always writing the opinion pieces. And of course, Chad Hart with uh, WebRTC Hacks, which does a technical deep dive on things like Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp and we try to tear apart what, what other folks have done. Uh, and we pulled this all together under the Cranky Geek brand. Now, none of this is possible without some sponsorships. And we, we've, the sponsors have, have been great as far as keeping the commercial aspect. This is about bringing education to you. And of course, Google has been fantastically supporting all of the logistics here you see today. Uh, Google has helped facilitate. Uh, so a big hand to Google for, for, for supporting this. And as well, uh, TalkBox, TalkBox is, is a part of the Telefonica organization who does a, a video, video and communications platform as a service. Uh, the CTO is here, he's speaking later today. I think you've seen him, Badri. And finally, uh, IBM Bluebix. IBM uh, has some extremely powerful uh, back-end tools that, that, can, that we can connect communications in, some very interesting demos that we'll see later today. So thanks again to our sponsors. Uh, for, for basically allowing us the freedom to put this event on for your benefit. You know, WebRTC is not really that complicated. There are really only three APIs in, in it, which is get the camera, get the, get the media, whether it's the camera or the microphone, grab, you know, create a peer connection, and simultaneously, if you desire to have a data connection. But the complexity behind that is quite high, uh, we, and Google continues to pull their hair out in terms of issues around cameras, microphones, is it the front camera, the back camera, and all the different types of hardware variations. Um, so I think, I think that, that you know, we're, we're not doing a basic tutorial here today. We've sort of moved past a WebRTC 101. There are Cranky Geek videos that do do the WebRTC 101, which I encourage you to go back and learn. There's, of course, uh, 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 App WebRTC, what is it, Sam? What's the? AppRTC. AppRTC, which, of course, is the very beginning steps for uh, WebRTC. This is a chart from Dean Bubbly. Remember, I started way back here, even well before this. Today, we've got you know, you're literally in the millions and millions of, of devices that are WebRTC compliant today. Uh, and and uh, I think that we're on the next threshold for with WebRTC, primarily bec because we now see a whole series of use cases. Now, clearly, video was the first one because that was easy. Lots of different video conferencing applications, uh, which is me talking to someone else. Uh, but now we've branched into machine, t me talking to a machine, or machine watching me with only one live person in a transaction. 
Uh, so here's some of the, this is from Sahi, Sahi's research. Sahi keeps a, a running research tab on all the different WebRTC companies around the world, and you can get a sense of the, the types of applications. And in terms of applications, and this is quite interesting, particularly for India, uh, India uh, has uh, um, you know, very strong uh, medical training, lots of, lots of Indian doctors that I've run into around the world. And we're also finding here, in, especially in India, lots of interest and in Asia in healthcare. Um, you don't have to go to the doctor's office. And of course, in Bangalore, we know it takes an hour. <laughs> and as well, expert market, um, tutoring, training, education, uh, translations. Uh, we see a lot of language training coming out of, out, out of China, where you know, the, the notion is, uh, here, I'll give you a statistic here. More people in China are learning to speak English than actually speak English today. So it's a phenomenal, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal industry in China teaching how to speak English, and many of these companies are using WebRTC as the underlying technology tool to power that. But others are coming up very quickly. Now, one of the questions I, uh, I, I just took on some poor little blogger said something and I went after them, which is, ah, oh, WebRTC is not ready. Well, in 2009 it wasn't ready, but now we're six years later. Uh, clearly, Chrome continues to be very strong in WebRTC. Uh, we have a Mozilla representative today here who's going to who's going to talk about where Mozilla is. Some very interesting things what Mozilla has done at, at, with WebRTC. Uh, Microsoft uh, with Edge now has come on board with ORTC, which is I think the way I was. Would you refer to it as WebRTC 1.1? Uh, whatever. It's a, it's a, Microsoft is coming along on this. Uh, the outlier, of course, is Apple, and no one really knows what Apple thinks about WebRTC. They don't. They, they show up at these events. Usually, I find them in the corner over there hiding, usually with another badge of some other company there. Um, but the short answer is, we know Microsoft, particularly with Skype, is now powering into into WebRTC and fully anticipate a lot of lot of momentum with them over the course of the next year. Um, and we've also seen a major change from where Microsoft a few years ago was very closed about talking about it, about cooperation about participating in the W3C. We now see that Microsoft is quite open and actually having dialogue and contributing intellectual property to the furtherment of real-time communications in the browser. Uh, so so the, the net of it is, is there isn't really any competing technology uh, about, it's not, like, it's not like some other technology where, oh, I want to use uh, you know, AngularJS. No, you should use React, you know, and all those sorts of you know, wars that go on about JavaScript frameworks. Uh, what, 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 no, everyone is in basic agreement about WebRTC as the base technology. Now, there's still some, some, not, some issues to be knocked down. It's, we're not all the way there yet, but we are far enough along for people to start deploying and actually using applications. And of course, we'll figure out what Apple does. Now, it's sort of interesting to hear, Apple is actually hiring WebRTC people. I don't like to tell anyone this. So if you, if you know WebRTC, you should apply at Apple to go help them figure this out. Um, We've also seen other, uh, but also interesting is we've, we've been tracking a lot of large corporations, large high tech companies who are sort of silently bringing WebRTC resource, they're looking for re, uh, WebRTC engineers. So the fact that you are here becoming educated about it means you're of value to these sort of individuals, these companies. And of course, in the middle of this, we have people who've already implemented WebRTC. Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, so, uh, we've got WeChat evaluated and of course the Google Plus. So we've got a lot of la very large installations already of WebRTC that we use today. And quite honestly, the excitement about it is if WebRTC is working correctly, you don't even know it's there. That's the beauty of it. It just sort of disappears into the application. And that's the real power I think that we, we as, app I'm not an application developer, but you as an application developer should, should be thinking about how can I use communications easily within my application. And as well, we've, we've seen a number of, of native apps. We've got some mobile discussions that we'll do today. Um, um, we, we, we had a word discussing with Google yesterday, sort of the movement away from apps into more um, browser-based applications. That trend is going to take some, that's, we're at the very beginning of that. But today, you know, there's, it's ironic that the best WebRTC implementations on mobile actually are on iOS, which I haven't quite figured out yet. But um, So we'll have some talks about that today. And of course, we've talked about Skype. I won't spend a lot of time there. But back to the simplicity message, and that message is simply, this is supposed to be easy. And so we're going to talk today 
about folks who've taken WebRTC and implemented it in their platforms or into their applications, some of the questions they asked themselves, some of the decisions they had to make. We've asked them to share their learnings with you so that it helps you in your own understanding. So what's next? Well, and I'm almost wrapped up here. Uh, we, we've got, uh, and I think some of the interesting, uh, that IBM Blue Mix uh, discussion should be quite interesting, which is leveraging the back-end power of media processing, also for TalkBox, of, of you know, very simplistically, you have an application gathering information, whether it be audio or video, and leveraging the cloud CPU power to do some very interesting AI sort of applications, transcription, translations, uh, media processing. Uh, these would have been, five years ago, they would have been, you could not do it. It would be too expensive. There was not no technology to do it. And now all of this is coming forward. So it's for some, very some very interesting media processing applications uh, for, for things that were just previously extremely hard to do. So with that, let's get the day going. Thank you again, and you're welcome for, for I appreciate you showing up this